Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> The zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary where we're doing vitally important conservation work. Not just for apes, but for all kinds of species. But apes, well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are. And yet, the way the world treats them is like, well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in a right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> what do you think of Madagascar then? Bit warm for my taste, to be honest. Anyway, this is Bernie's primate sanctuary. It's not just primates, though. We've got all sorts of animals. So why don't we go and have a look at some of them, eh? We'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs. They're the ones that look like they should be in a Shakespeare play. <laughs> Come on, let's head over to them. Red ruffed lemurs are found in the rainforests of Masuala, that's in northeast Madagascar. They can actually live anywhere from 15 up to 25 years. Fancy that, eh? OK, when you're ready, let's go find our Bornean orangutans. The Bornean orangutan is such a marvellous creature. They're always a big favourite at any zoo they feature in. And they're also the biggest tree-dwelling animal on the planet. <laughs> Assuming you don't count any lions that got stuck up one. Oh, why don't you take a better look at them? Open up their information panel and go into the animal camera. Aren't they just incredible? When you're ready, let's go and have a look-see at some of our beautiful bonobos. <laughs> They're quite the characters. Oh dear! It looks like we've arrived just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. And wouldn't you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. Select the habitat boundary to bring up the habitat information panel. Good, now open the Animals tab. 
and click on Box All Animals to box up the remaining bonobos. Now, we'll need a vet to recapture that escaped bonobo, but it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire a replacement, Sharpish. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area. You can find all of your staff in here, but there's no time to go looking at their particulars at the moment. Hire a vet! Now, click on one of the paths to place the vet in your zoo. Great, now let's deal with our escapee before they can cause too much havoc. Use the animal alert to jump to the escaped bonobo. And then, click on the Call Vet button to call the vet over to capture it. Oh, oh OK, that's a relief. <laughs> so while the vet deals with our bonobo friend, let's go fix up their habitat so they can't escape again. Head back over there. As you can see, the barrier's collapsed. Someone's taken their eye off the ball, obviously. Let's get this one replaced. Select the barrier and then we'll edit it. Delete the broken section of barrier and replace it with a brand spanking new one. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb-proof barriers to the top. That way the bonobos won't be able to climb out. Just make sure you've got the correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. OK, so go into the Options section and select which side the climb-proof barrier needs to go on. And don't get it wrong. <laughs> We're more worried about bonobos climbing out than guests climbing in. Nicely done! And I think it's high time we unbox those bonobos, wouldn't you say? <laughs> the poor mites will get sad if we leave them in there for too long.
select the habitat barrier to bring up the habitat information panel again. And then open the Animals tab. And finally, click on Unbox All Animals to let them out. I expect some of them are fair bursting for the toilet. So, it turns out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. We'll need to hire a couple of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. You see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful things around the zoo, but one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. <laughs> Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble and fall down. And before you know it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area again. Hire a mechanic and then click on a path to place them in the zoo. <laughs> and then click on the path again to hire a second mechanic. As you can see, you don't have to go back into staff management if you're hiring lots of the same type of staff member. We have been busy, haven't we? Good work there. I'm off for a cuppa. Oh, I think Bernie wants a word with you. Oh, I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escape bonobo. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. And more importantly, without the animals stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. You see, another key responsibility for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment items, additional information for our education resources, enhanced breeding programs and improvements to food quality. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the animals' food, not the vets. It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, research is a key part of running your zoo. In order for a vet to undertake research, they require a research centre. <laughs> And once again, that's something that this zoo is missing. So let's build one. I've marked out an area for you to put it. Now, you've probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research centre. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell, so we're able to place our new building inside of it. If you select the research centre for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research centre to the existing building. OK, click to add it to the building. Oh, but that won't place it in just yet, though. 
first, we'll need to rotate our research centre so it automatically connects to the path when we place it. Splendid work! Now that we have a brand spanking new research centre, we can give our vets something to do in there. Oh, by the way, it's worth noting that the vets will only do research when they're not required to do any other jobs. That said, you can change what jobs a vet does via their information panel. But let's not worry about that just now. So, let's get our vet researching ringtail lemurs. Go into the zoo section and select Vet Research. Here, you can see a list of all the animals present in your zoo, and also all the potential diseases that can occur. Now, drag and drop your vet onto the ring-tailed lemur to start their research. Thinking about it, I'm not sure we've got any education boards or speakers by the lemur's habitat. Let's head over there and add some, so our guests can learn all about the furry little delights. First off, let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or, if you like, pop them down on a stand. And from the drop down list, select Ring Tailed Lemur. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. When you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much.
Okay, now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. Okay, now that we've done the education boards, let's pop down a pair of speakers. Speakers play audio to the guests so they can learn while they look at the animals, instead of having to go through the laborious process of reading. Oh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's important not to put the speakers too close together. If you do, the guests won't be able to understand what's being said. Now we simply need to link the speakers to the ring-tailed lemurs, just like you did with the education boards. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 
Fantastic! Oh, it's worth remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. They won't do much good without it. Oh, it looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. We'll need to collect the results. We can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into the vet research area. Go on, collect your research rewards. Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. Some animals, like lemurs, will have a climbing need. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space, and you can fulfil that requirement by building them a climbing frame. Let's find out how much more climbing space our lemur friends need, shall we? Select one of them and bring up their information panel. Next, click on the Terrain tab. Ah, now, as you can see, the lemurs need quite a lot more climbing space. But as it happens, I've already got a climbing frame blueprint built for you. So you can either pop that down or build one yourself from scratch. By the way, it's not always just climbing needs that you have to worry about. Other animals might need a certain amount of water in their habitat so they can go for a swim. <laughs> they certainly do keep us on our toes. That's a great climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely love it. Do you know what would make them even happier, though? Nicer food. But that's true of all of us, though, isn't it? You can unlock better quality food for animals through research. Luckily, we've already unlocked some for the lemurs, so all that remains is to make sure they get served it from now on. Let's bring up the habitat information panel by selecting the lemur habitat.
Lovely. Now select the Animals tab. There we go. As you can see, we can set the food quality in here. Just click on the drop-down menu and select Grade 2 Food Quality. Grade 2 Food Quality. My mouth's already watering. So, a new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. <laughs> now, I think it's time we looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities. Releasing animals into the wild. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Well, their age is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidate will have a high fertility gene. And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. And what's more, the animals you can adopt will be of a higher quality. So, with that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. Okay, I'd like you to find Agang, the Bornean orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the habitat barrier, go to the Animals tab in the Habitat Information panel, and find him in the Animals list. Okay, I'd like you to find Agang, the Bornean orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the habitat barrier, go to the Animals tab in the Habitat Information panel, and find him in the Animals list.
I know it's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild. And he's a wonderful candidate for release. Young, strong and fertile. Excellent work there. You've definitely got potential, you know. Ah, I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring-tailed lemur. I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more aldebra. Tortoises. Okay, so far we've done a lot of work with habitat animals, but now it's time to learn all about exhibit animals. Let's build a brand new exhibit. I've marked an area for our new exhibit. How about we head over there? Lovely. Now let's build a new exhibit in the gap that's been left. Just add it to the building like we did with the research centre earlier, then pop it into the gap. Perfect. The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. How about a Gila monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. Just as we do with habitat animals, we need to send the Gila monster to the exhibit. Click on the exhibit to send it there. When you send an animal to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready for them. So let's finish it off. We'll start by adding some enrichment items. Click on the exhibit to bring up its information panel. Good. Now click on the Layout tab. Oh, well it looks like we've only got the Enrichment Level 1 items unlocked at the moment. Never mind, let's turn on at least one of them for the Healer Monster. As I'm sure you know by now, you can unlock more Enrichment Levels by having one of your vets do some research. Now we'll also need to set the temperature and humidity in the exhibit. These are vitally important for keeping our Gila monster happy and comfortable. Click on the Climate tab. Here you can see the Gila monster's desired temperature and humidity. You can change both of these by adjusting the dials below. Make sure it's going to be nice and cosy. That's the ticket! And the last thing we need to look at is setting up the different windows. So click on the Windows tab. You can edit and customise any of the windows on an exhibit. A window can be closed and blank or have a two-dimensional background or even a three-dimensional background on it. Why don't you have a play around with the options? Oh, 
There's also an exhibit education board. Pop them down near your exhibits to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. Le vitno a la gila gomitubo un nom temsi, un mel from spalen pata onda a la stop kershapno. Plumam jaid at puchala se jano dua moje zutati parha se mobi. Le vismo a la gila gom. 
Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Right, now, I've got a bit of a big job for you. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. You'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Go on, off you pop. I'll check in with you when you're almost done.
My, my, you have been busy, haven't you? Splendid! But now that you've adopted all these lovely new species, we need to make sure they're nice and happy. So let's get the average welfare across the zoo nice and high, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Go on, get to it!
Lovely job there. You should be proud of yourself. Not only have you expanded the zoo and kept the animals as happy as Lanny, but you didn't bankrupt us in the process. Amazing. Wow. Well, you've certainly transformed the zoo. I barely recognize it. A wonderful new exhibit, some fascinating new species, and you've done wonders for the animals' welfare by enriching their habitats. <laughs> Who doesn't love playing with a three-foot-wide soccer ball, huh? <laughs> I mean, other than professional soccer players. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't easy, though. I expect money was tighter than a possum's pouch. 
Plowing all those funds back into the welfare of the animals doesn't make running these places a picnic. Although, it does make me feel a little less guilty about how much our gift shops charge. <laughs> no, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason to run a zoo is to help animal kind. Sadly, it appears some other people have far less noble goals.